Hello, brothers and sisters of Christ. I hope this shows up. This is just going to be a quick prayer request. Um, I know some of the brethren are having some problems and everything, but the biggest prayer request I've got right now is I have brethren that will email me or text me and talk to me, and they're brethren that are under the age of 18. They're between 16 and 18. And they're talking about how they, they're... They, they lack the courage to stand up to their family members as far as letting them know I'm a Christian now. Remember the Bible says that we're not supposed to be ashamed. So I always try to encourage them to be honest with your family. Be honest with your mother and father and uh, your brothers and sisters. I'm a Christian now. I'm a Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian. But it's hard to stand up to them. Um, I, just, I got saved at 35, so I already had some kind of courage because of being a grown man and I'm living on my own uh, to be able to stand up to family members like my mom and dad at 35 is a lot easier than it's I, I, I'm saying it's a lot easier than someone at 17 or 16 uh, brother JT is a great brother in Christ to go talk to with a great testimony of getting saved at a young age um, but one of the things that they need prayer about is they like I don't know what to do I'm supposed to live right but I keep getting tempted and I, I kind of want to live on my own someday and everything and I'm all for it, brothers and sisters in Christ that are under the age of 18, 17, not leaving, but what I'm saying is is someday, <laughs> that rooster really likes to get a crow when, when he thinks I'm out here, um, but what I'm saying is is my advice to you as far as the way the world is right now is to learn a good trade skill. If you're a young man that gets saved under the age of 18 or even above, but under the age of 18, Start learning a good trade skill, carpentry work, uh, mechanic, plumber, electrician, um, landscaping, some kind of work that you can do with your hands and stay in shape, but it really helps out, especially in these last days and what's going on out there. You don't want a desk job or something like that. You want a job where you can get out and go around and do work, all right? but good trade skills. Um, I said carpenter work, work, like woodworking, but there's also people that are fix-its, where they learn how to fix things around the house. Um, I can't think of the name. The name kind of goes away, but uh, where you hire someone to come and remodel houses and stuff like that, but you learn your way around wood, around tools, around uh, fixing certain things. Okay, um, Learn a good trade skill, so then if you have to get a summer job, like a part-time summer job, doing like the newspaper boys, I did that before once. Uh, going around and mowing lawns in the neighborhood, I did that uh, under the age of 18. Um, and then you get a job. Uh, when you get enough experience, you get out and you get a job. That way you can get your own place because what they're talking about is they're stressed because they're getting talked into doing things they don't want to do anymore. They don't want to watch movies. They don't want to wa play the video games. They don't want to do all listen to the satanic style music and stuff like that. Some of them are being forced to go to the Babel buildings. Um, my, like I said, my advice for you is to stay in the Word of God, keep praying, be honest with your parents. I'm a Bible-believing, God-fearing man or young lady. Uh, the young ladies out there, if you're young, what you need to be doing is you need to be practicing to be a good keeper at home. You need to be practice cleaning. You need to practice, uh, get some trade skills like sewing and crocheting and you know be able to make blankets make uh, clothes uh, dehydrating food which I'm learning how to do now I might do a video um, dehydrating canning uh, cooking whole good foods learning how to cook and you know being a great keeper at home stay in the Word of God for both men and women young men and women Bible believing God fearing men and women brothers and sisters in Christ um, but they desperately need our prayer because in these last days, I don't know what's hap gonna happen. This, uh, come November this, this year, how bad is it gonna get when we get to the next flu season and with the um, bologna sandwiches that are out there? Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I just don't know how bad it's gonna get. But my thing is, is no matter how bad it gets out there, I'll let the vehicle go by. No matter how bad it gets out there, the Bible says, um, I can do all things through Christ with strength in me. The Bible talks about how God's going to watch over us. He won't leave us nor forsake us. Okay. No matter what happens, we're supposed to continue living our life for Jesus Christ. We're to continue being a light to the world. And you can't be a light to the world if you hide your, 
you hide that you're a Christian, a Bible-believing, God-fearing man or woman. You can't be a light to the world. And maybe God has you saved at that young of an age, because I could, I, I keep, I think about what it would be like if I got saved that young. And part of me is like, I'd have to go 50 years. <laughs> I'm 42. Uh, if I got saved that young, I'd have to go 25 years. I've been saved for seven years now, and it feels like um, I've been saved for 100. Just, I feel old, you know. All the struggles with the flesh, the struggles with this world, seeing the body of Christ get strong, fall apart, get strong, fall apart, and that's only been seven years. People fall away, come back, fall away again. Um, the struggle, you know, I just feel old. But God might have you saved that young so that you can reach your parents. Okay, reach a brother or sister, uh, actual brother and sister. Okay, sibling, you know. God might have that for a reason, but if it gets really bad, my advice is to learn some trade skills. If you're a young man, for a good, solid job where you get to work with your hands. Um, sisters in Christ, study to be a really good keeper at home, and when it comes to your father that's lost, make sure as long as what he's not, if he's asking you to do something that doesn't go against Scripture, you have to practice that mentality of, I'm under his uh, head covering, as long as it doesn't go against scripture. So if he tells me to clean my room, I need to have the attitude of, yes, dad. He says, okay, we got company come over, put on some clean clothes because you've got some dirty clothes on. Then you say, yes, dad, we'll clean this, do that. You know, yes, dad, as long as it doesn't go against scripture, you've got to practice. The Bible says the elder women in the church are to teach the younger women how to love their husbands. And loving your husbands is learning how to be under the authority and headship of a man which is going to be your husband so you someday. So you practice and, and get all these skills and get it good where you're a good keeper at home, okay? Gardening wouldn't hurt, you know, for men or women, but you know what I'm saying? Start working now. If it's that bad in your home, as far as the sin, the temptation, them yelling at you, you need to quit. Because I had one guy, a brother tell me that they were telling him he needs to give up that Bible-believing nonsense and everything. And they're getting all this pressure to go back to the world, go back to the world. And these young brethren that are out there, brothers and Christ, they need our prayer because they start to doubt their salvation. The Bible talks about how you uh, quench the Spirit, quench not the Spirit, where ye are sealed into the day of redemption. We can talk ourselves out of conviction. We can quench the spirit. And that's what they're getting talked into doing. And they're getting pressured into doing it. And they're babes in Christ. And I just pray. Like I said, we just need to pray for them. Especially in these days. If it wasn't for what's going on out there, I'd say, hey, just, you know, do your best. Continue serving the Lord. And, do, and as soon as you can, if you have to, move out. When you get old enough, have a job, you move out. Young lady, just keep praying and praying to God for a Bible-believing, God-fearing man. And there's extreme situations where, you know, you might go stay with a brother or sister in Christ. I've offered my home to people that I believe are 100% saved, that I fellowship with for a long time. I've opened my home to them, saying, hey, if you need to, you can come stay with me. I won't just do it for some stranger. Don't get me wrong but someone, like just someone new professing to be saved. But I'm saying in extreme situations, you turn 18, you know, you might have to just get out of that. The Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. And if there's a lot of wickedness and you just get saved in a very wicked home, uh, you might have to get out of there as soon as possible. And I'm going to be praying for you that God opens doors to help you to. And brothers and sisters in Christ, the elder brothers and sisters in Christ, please pray for the younger Christians. Especially, I'm talking about actual young, not just babes in Christ because you've been saved for a year. I'm talking about men and women that get saved at a very young age. You know, pray for them. It's just so tempting to grab them and thrust them right back into the world and get them to be the old woman and the old man. And they're, it just, I couldn't fathom it. I think the reason God had me wait is because He knew I would never have gotten saved at that young age. I was never ready at that age. So... Just a big, huge prayer request. Please, brothers and sisters Christ, please be praying for one another, especially in these last days. Pray for one another, that we stay true to the Word of God, that we have the courage to stand up and say, I'm a Christian, to the young ones out there, and not be losing courage because they're being intimidated by family members. Okay? I'm not saying dishonor your parents. Please don't dishonor your parents. Don't disrespect your parents. But you've got to have the courage to let them know that, hey, 
I belong to Jesus Christ, the King James Bible. I'm a King James Bible believing, God fearing man or woman. Okay, and get yourself King James Bible. Stay in it. Say uh, hymns. Get some good hymns. And uh, lately, I've been looking up good hymns and having to type them out myself and put them in three ring binders. Because I had a brother ask me, would I suggest? I've had to look up hymns. My advice for hymns is look up hymns, and then apply those hymns to the Bible and see if they line up old hymns. See if they line up with Scripture. They line up with scripture, that's good to go, add it to your list of hymns, okay? I've had books, like hymnal books, that have bad hymns in them that don't line up with scripture, and if it's one or two, you can put an X through it and say, okay, it's a bad one, but when I keep going through and I, you know, a third of them are bad, it's like, might as well just get another book, and I keep looking for books myself. Uh, if you can go to, uh, get a used bookstore and find an old hymnal, you'll find some really good hymns. But if you go online today and try to buy a new book for old hymns, they've messed with them or they've put in a lot of ones that really aren't based off scripture. So it's hard. Um, so right now I like the one in Christ Alone. Okay, I've been listening to that one a lot, in Christ Alone. I like the uh, old hymn where Jesus, the name above all names, and it goes through all these different titles for Jesus. You know, Man of Sorrows, Lamb of God. I love that one. And it's like, Jesus, name above all names, beautiful counselor, prince of peace, Emmanuel, God is with us. And it just goes through all these different titles, and it was just amazing. I love that hymn. Um, and you check all the titles. Are the titles in here? Yes, they are. Okay, then they're good. Um, so because he's a man of sorrows, and it ends with man of sorrows, lamb of God. So it's just, you gotta really look hard, find some hymns. When you're in a situation where you're surrounded by people at a young age, what's really gonna help you is Bible reading, go for walks and read your Bible. Hymns, okay, singing hymns, memorizing hymns. Okay. Um, do, like I said, the little, uh, uh, if you can't carry a big Bible like this, because uh, you're going to be doing some work out and about, uh, flashcards. I keep trying to use my hands. <laughs> flashcards. I didn't bring them with me. I don't have them on me, but right here. I put them in my pockets when I leave the house. When I'm at the house, I don't mind reading this and everything. Um, but anytime I leave the house, I put them in my pocket. So when I'm out and about, if I'm getting tempted or if I want to go stop on the beach or in the forest because it's the mountainside, or the lakes or the rivers or whatever, and I want to go for a walk and talk with the Lord, I pull those out and I use scripture and start talking to the Lord. And sometimes I'll have them in my hands and I'll go start talking to the Lord about things that, He wants to hear about everything and anything in your life. All brothers and sisters in Christ, but mainly this is for the young brethren and sis, brothers and sisters. He wants to hear everything in your life. The struggles you're having with your mom and dad, the struggles you're having with your siblings, um, the temptations, take it to the Lord in prayer. Okay? He wants to hear about it. He'll encourage you. He'll help you to overcome that and fight sin. Okay? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's why this is so important. That's why the flashcards are so important. That's why if you're getting tempted, go for a walk. Even if you're in a neighborhood at home, go for a walk. And say, pray to the Lord that, hey, show me a place where I can go for a walk and won't be tempted. To be able to abstain from all appearance of evil. Have some... Find some good favorite spots that you like to go to. I've found a few around here that you like to go to to walk. Okay. So, um, brothers and sisters in Christ, please, 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 the elder brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, pray for the younger ones. And pray for everyone when it comes to being courageous, uh, speaking with um, authority, but uh, boldly. That's the word I'm looking for, boldly. Be able to speak boldly. Not disrespectfully. Not Don't be a jerk. Okay, don't be disrespectful, but to speak with boldness, to have courage to say, hey, I don't want to do that. God says it's a sin, and I'm not supposed to do that. I'm not going to do that. Okay, It's, it's hard, especially with the peer pressure. When you're young, um, it's very hard. So, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Keep praying for one another, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'll see you in the next video.